Junior Conductors, I'm Conductor Carl, and welcome aboard the Storytime Express. Oh, it's almost Christmas. Are you as excited about the holiday as I am? Well, what do you expect to find on Christmas morning around your Christmas tree? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you might find a present or, or a stocking full of treats sitting right underneath that tree. That's what I hope to find under my tree. Now, have you ever wondered why we give each other presents at Christmas? Well, there's an important reason, and it goes all the way back to the true story about Jesus we read in the Bible. We'll learn all about that today. If you're ready to have a fun time at the train station, give me a big choo-choo. <laughs> Hey Junior Conductors! I'm trying to figure out which present to give my friend Conductor Carl. Oh, he's been so nice to me this year and I, I want to thank him by giving him an extra special gift. Would you like to help me decide? <laughs> Thanks! So I thought of some ideas. He likes to drink juice. Oh, we could give him a baby bottle. My niece likes to drink from one. Do you think that would be a good gift? No? Why not? Right. Yeah, a bottle is only for a baby. That's true. I could give him a bone! Oh, my dog, Ralph, loves it when I give him a bone to fetch. Would that work? Oh, you're right. Uh, bones are really only good gifts for dogs. Hmm. You know, Conductor Carl likes to exercise. Oh, maybe he'd like a hamster wheel. Oh, my hamster runs fast on his. Uh, do you think he's too big to fit in a hamster wheel? Huh, I don't know what to give him. Oh, hey there, Engineer Kelly. <laughs> what you up to today? Well, trying to think of a gift, a Christmas gift for Conductor Carl, but I'm kind of having trouble. Oh, well, you're his friend, so I know you're going to find a gift he'll love, but, oh, I, I need your help today. You see, the kids are hosting a play at the church today, but they're missing the king. Could you find the king and bring him to the play? Uh, that sounds like an important job. Mm -hmm. uh, you can count on me. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. I would do it, but I, I have to get all the hot chocolate and marshmallows ready for after the play. I'll see you soon, okay? <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> oh, my. Does finding a missing king sound like a big job? It sure does. Oh, Engineer Courtney. Hey. <laughs> Did you hear? Hear what? Oh, well, the king is missing from the play and I have to find him. Oh, that seems really important. Can I help? Sure. Okay, first we need to think about what a king looks like. Hmm. Let's all pretend that I'm wearing a king's costume. <laughs> Whoa, look at engineer Courtney. What is she wearing on her head? A crown! Are her clothes plain or fancy? They are fancy! Does she have a robe? You know what? This must be the person we're looking for today. Hey, I have an idea! We could ask Inspector Nigel to help us. That's a great idea! You know, He's a detective, so he's really good at finding missing things. And while we're looking, you can help me think of a present. Junior conductors, 
Why don't you start by looking for the king at the music store? Hi, Junior Conductors. Welcome to the music store. Let's learn today's big point. Put your hand up to your ear. Jesus is king. Great job. Let's do it again. Here we go. Jesus is king. Good job, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Uh, slow down, slow down. I can barely understand what you're saying. Who's missing? The king. The king? The king. Now that sounds like an important mystery to solve. All right, yeah. We need to start by going to a place where you'd normally find a king. Oh, where should we look, junior conductors? Should we look in a castle or a barn? Oh. That's it. Mm -hmm. A castle is Ooh. where you find the missing king. All right, let's go! All right, let's follow my magnifying glass to look for where our king sits. Now, when it stops, you gotta point at it, okay? Mm. Oh, it stopped on a throne. Ooh. That's an important. 
court uh -huh. seat for an important person. <gasps> Let's all sit up straight and tall and wave like a king. Ooh. All right, now do you see anyone on the seat? Oh, it's empty. You know, sometimes a king dresses like a knight. Hmm. Follow the magnifying glass mm -hmm. and point to where it stops. Huh, you're right. It stopped on that suit of armor. Hmm. Let's pretend to swing a sword like a brave knight. Oh. Oh, good idea. Do you see a king in that armor? Nope. Oh, it's empty. Oh, no. I think we better go tell the kids that the king is lost forever. Oh, that's terrible! Well, hey there. Did you find the missing king? Oh, man. We looked all over the castle and still didn't find the king. And we even looked inside a suit of armor and... The king wasn't there either. Well, that's because y'all were looking in the wrong place. Well, the king we're looking for wasn't in a castle. Where is he? It's a mystery. Oh, actually, we're looking for a young child. A child that's a king? That's right. Listen to this verse from the Bible. Isaiah 9, dot, dot, 6 says, A child will be born to us. He will rule over us. Now that verse is talking about Jesus. He is the king. There's a story in the Bible about some wise men who searched for a baby king. I think you all need to hear the big point first though. Hi Junior Conductors, welcome to the music store. Let's learn today's big point. Put your hand up to your ear. Jesus is king. Great job! Let's do it again. Here we go. Jesus is king. Good job, boys and girls. Bye-bye. and Engineer Kelly were looking in the wrong place for our king. They thought he'd be wearing a crown and living in a big castle. You know, a lot of people were surprised when Jesus was born. They didn't expect a king to be born among the animals and lying in hay. You know, God does lots of unexpected things. And there were some guys who knew that Jesus is the king even though he was a little boy. 
Let's travel to the Big Story Station and learn why these wise men had such great joy. Our big point says Jesus is King. Have you ever seen one of these sets in your house or your grandparents' house? Do you know what they're called? They're called nativity sets. That's a big word that means someone was born. Hmm, let's see who's here. I see Mary and Joseph. God gave them the big job of being Jesus' parents on earth. There are some sheep and a cow. Everyone say moo. Good job. Jesus was born around animals and used hay for a bed. Oh, I see the shepherds and angels who came and told the shepherds about Jesus and how he came to save us. And hmm, there's some other men called the wise men. Let's talk about their story. After Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph found a house in Bethlehem to live in so that Jesus didn't keep sleeping in all that hay. Well, around that same time, some guys showed up in Jerusalem. They were from a far away country and they had seen a big star in the sky around the time Jesus was born. Let's pretend to look up and see a bright star. Oh, it's so bright, cover your eyes. Good job. The wise men knew this star meant someone important had been born and they had come to find that important person. Well, along the way, the wise men asked for help finding their way to the new king. And they were told to go to the city of Bethlehem. That's where Jesus was born. The star reappeared in the sky and settled right over the top of Jesus' house. Jesus was still very little when the wise men came to his house. But they knew right away that Jesus was the king. The wise men gave Jesus' presents. That's what people did whenever they met a king. The wise men gave gold to Jesus. Let's pretend to toss some gold coins in the air. Good job. They also gave Jesus frankincense and myrrh. Those are things that smell really good. Let's pretend to smell something nice. The wise men loved giving those gifts to Jesus. They went home so happy because they had found Jesus. I'm so glad that we have a kind and loving King. Jesus takes care of us and he helps us. We want everybody to know that Jesus is our King. I have an idea. We could use presents to remember that Jesus is King. Our Christmas gifts remind us of the presents that the wise men gave to Jesus. So whenever we give a gift to somebody else, we can think about our big point, Jesus is King. I have another idea. Since we know that Jesus is our King, let's give him a gift today. We don't have to have gold or things that smell good. We can give Jesus our thank yous. Let's close our eyes and everyone quietly tell Jesus thank you for being a kind and loving king. That was a good job. Let's remember every day that Jesus is our king and we can tell all our friends and family that Jesus is a good king. That's something you can do on Christmas morning too. I'm glad that we can thank Jesus. I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas. Now I'd like to pray for us. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming 
to earth so that we could know you and be your friends and followers. Thank you for being such a good king. And thank you that you love us. We love you too. In Jesus' name, amen. found that baby Jesus doll for the kids to use in the play. Me too. When Conductor Gordon said that the king was missing, I thought he meant like a big, tall king with a crown. Me too. Oh, I'm looking. Oh, oh. Oh. oh, I've been looking everywhere and I still can't find the missing king. Did you find him or is it still a mystery? Well, we found him. You see, they were missing the baby Jesus doll. <laughs> we discovered that Jesus is the king. We've solved the mystery. Wait a second. Is Jesus missing? <laughs> no. The kids were just missing the doll. Oh. The real Jesus, he's in heaven. Oh, right there. Did you know that some wise men actually found Jesus when he was little and gave him gifts? Do you think that's because he's a king? Junior conductors, what kind of gifts did they give Jesus? Was it toy cars, teddy bears, and blankets? <laughs> no, it was frankincense, myrrh, and what was that last gift? Hmm. It was gold, yeah. Well, that sounds like gifts meant for a king. Oh, that's it. We give gifts at Christmas to help us remember how the wise men gave gifts to Jesus. Yes, and to remember that Jesus is God's gift to us. Hmm. So, I should give Conductor Carl a gift that a conductor would enjoy. Oh. oh I've got to go shopping right now. Thanks so much for your help. Huh. I think we should investigate the big point one more time at the music store. Let's do it. Hi, Junior Conductors. Welcome to the music store. Let's learn today's big point. Put your hand up to your ear. Jesus is king. Great job. Let's do it again. Here we go. Jesus is king. Good job, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Junior conductors, Look what my friend Engineer Kelly gave to me. It's a coffee mug. Do you see what's on the front? <laughs> it's a train. She thought a train mug would be a great gift for Conductor Carl. And guess what? She was right. I love to drink coffee and hot chocolate out of my train mug. <laughs> you know those wise men's gifts to Jesus were the perfect gift for a king? They knew Jesus had come to be the leader. And I'm glad we have a good leader like Jesus to help us celebrate at Christmas. Now I want to share with you today's big do. Gather your family together and ask each other what you would do if you were the king. Think about all of the reasons why Jesus is a good king to us. Now I'm going to use my new mug to enjoy that hot cup of cocoa with the kids after the play. Thankfully, we have everyone there, even the king, thanks to you, Junior Conductors. Well, I'll see you again soon, and have a Merry Christmas! Yay!